hey it's me um before you're typing a comment um be sure to watch the full video to get every information and yeah enjoy thank you okay we're only gonna acknowledge meta setups here so no indomitable builds but basically indomitable is just low crit and maximize the right amount and then boss damage but anyway um speaking of right amount of maximize um let's just hop into it fast so when i dps i play with like 82 crit rate and 73 maximize actually it's not 73 it's 71 and you're good with 71 i personally play 82 crit rate because um i played 80 but with 80 i saw yellow numbers with 82 or in this case 81.2 i'm not seeing any yellow numbers so this is actually fine. Um, you may think the maximize is a bit low, but remember we have a 20% maximize passive. We get like 12% from gear. So if you have a full plus elf rigomo gear, you wanna go for around 82 crit and 70 maximize. Um, as you can see here, my stats are a bit lower than the ones you would actually want because if you want 100% maximize you are usually seeing builds like 74 but I'm doing it like this because as you can see my gear has full 6% sage sockets this means I can put on every seasonal full boss damage that's really important because you're gonna see later why this is important um, we will not cover so much typical stuff so as usual unique headhunter unique eroding um, the other things doesn't matter really so <clears throat> okay now it's time we talk about the IB the IB um, for weapon anything like seven world or uh, horde of darkness or wonder Martian is fine but for raids uh, I wouldn't wear a combination like you know for raid you don't want something like these or this I I can recommend that just go on full adapt use a single weapon which has a good effect in my case i use this one ignore defense still very strong stat it doesn't matter if you can debuff the raid it hits really hard um i am really i'm i'm still convinced about not the defense because well you see my raid ones and they are all with this setup and if you see that i don't even have this title soon i will um you can see how much it's worthy to play like this but you can also use a seven words weapon or this weapon or like i don't know any weapon that gives like a good effect a really good effect that you can say okay i can let this alone so it's worthy um now for the five piece combination well here the opinion spread a bit what I have been doing since quite a while now is just use the Q and IB, which means you would need to buy the newest one every three or so months. And yes, I know some of them suck quite a lot. But trust me, the amount of potions you can use with the buff make your gameplay really, really strong. Like, um, you can spam so much, you can always press a skill without being worried uh, about your HP because if you have followed my raid runs, then you will see that I play like how I intend to do the most of damage and with the current IB I always have a potion on the back to heal myself up and this is how you can get a hold to things I'm pretty sure um, this is really 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 expensive uh, expensive <laughs> important because um, like I mean normally you would say that this set is currently the strongest one um, but this one is also good actually. This is the first time we have another really good IB. Uh, it grants like a bit cooldown. ASD. I mean sure this one is still stronger. No no true opinions. It just grants so much stats. But trust me. Um, if you use the buff, your gameplay gets really really good. That's so important. Um, okay, we covered a lot of utility stuff now. It's really important. That you keep these things in mind but now it gets more important and by saying that i mean we're gonna look at the skill tree um we only, we're gonna only look at the passives now so now comes the most important part um the passives let's start here okay dark power um essentially dark power 
is the passive that opens the door for every skill, like you can use skills that usually would deal magic damage. Um, but this is only important for Henia. I mean, um, like, yeah, you will understand soon. Um, the, pass the passive has another really important effect. Unlike other illnesses, like unlike the other paths, our job is is uh, buffed. As you can see, the gorge um, gets a boost from this passive. So in gale mode, you use less MP for skills, and you get healed more. You get healed a lot, like a lot, a lot, lot. As you can see, every gale hit skill recovers your HP on 100%. This is really important because this allows us to be relevant, re, re, relevant in the um, re, relevant, relevant in the current meta for being a DPS. Because if it weren't like this, then well, we need to play on this HP always to be able to do damage. But yeah, we don't need to because we can set heal fields. Um, pretty important passive dark, dark power. So keep in mind. <clears throat> usually, it's like. Um, Gale skills, um, how I say that now, blue skills heal you and red skills hit harder. This means you can use in game mode skills like Unmod Bloodfall and Bloodswarm to create heal fields, like you saw before. Since they heal you up with every hit, and Bloodfall, well, you, you'd rather want to use Bloodfall as a mod skill because it does so much damage. It's just an insane skill. Uh, but yeah, that's Dark Power, so you have your Aura Gorge boosted, that's like it. Let's go to the next one, Judgment. Um, judgment is not really matter relevant, it's um, it's just that every command can inflict bleeding, as you can see. Uh, bleeding is more like a PvP based thing, so um, yeah, you want to keep that in mind. It's not really important here it's just a, a pvp thing um let's go to the next and the next is crimson revenge okay crimson revenge now we're talking crimson revenge is really important and it will be more important later when i explain you my skill bar um actually it's easy to explain crimson revenge is when you use a blood hit skill the the incoming skills damage is increased by 16 percent uh, what does this mean? Actually, this is the symbol you want to look for, Crimson Revenge, and it is that doesn't matter if it's for special active skills or for active skills, both count. Both skills count. So if I use Demon Fist now, you will see this buff disappearing and appearing again. That's it. So keep in mind that this is a core passive for our DPS gameplay. Um, more to that later. First, we go to the next passive, and the next passive is Condemnation. Condemnation is um, nothing much to say here, it's just a maximized, maximized passive, it grants 20% maximize. Uh, we talked about the stats before, so um, we don't need to go so much into this one. Um, but the next one, oh boy, do we need to talk about the next one. Here is where things get interesting. So this passive has two effects. Um, you can see... Here, the higher part is one effect. This part, if it would stay now. Um, like, you can see on uh, attack power 10%, duration 5 seconds. That's this one here. Uh, and as you can see, it has a 5, it doesn't change. This is because it only changes once you have full HP. So, if I heal myself now, you see the buff is going down but that's not important because the way you are dpsing is like you burn your hp so you can't lose the buff you can't lose the buff literally if you use a skill and burn your hp the buff appears so if you heal yourself this would mean the buff goes down now but it gets reapplied every time so there is no way you can lose this buff during dpsing if you constantly use skills which is what you do as dps you can't lose this buff this is so, in hindsight, I can only say, don't worry too much about this, um, it will apply it automatically. So, let's just go to the next part of the skill, and that says, Blood it, HP consumption, minus 90%, minus 90%, um, debuff removal once every 10 seconds. Um, you can remove certain debuffs. This means that 
the 12.7 P3 debuff, like the Russell Flame debuff, you can remove yourself. The same as 15.5 P1, you can also remove the debuff, um, but it's not really relevant. It's, I mean, you can remove debuffs every 10 seconds, it happens automatically, you don't need to do anything else. Just use your skills, follow the rotation, we're gonna go to that soon. And yeah, there is another thing. This passive is really really important and this is where people also get confused because it was the same for me it took me a long time to see that this that this passive grants you two buffs so the first buff i told you already you don't need to care about so much as you can see it's this one here um the next one is this one here demonic aura demonic aura is something you can stack to five and if you stack this to five like from four and now it will disappear and this is demonic hour blood runaway you can see it here um it grants you a boost and honestly 40 percent attack power is insane it's really insane don't worry you can apply this very fast so if you do this and this you also have you already have like there it is three four it it can be applied really fast you you Obviously, you need to do two or three bloodstorms and it is applied, so don't worry too much about that. Um, important is just after the four, the buff is going to be applied here, and here it is again. And now you might asking yourself, but can I stack it? You can't. You can't stack it, it will only go back to the 15 seconds. So don't worry, if you're DPSing using your skills, the buff will stay up. So. Don't worry about too much about this, just you need to understand what it does. If you don't understand what it does, then you're probably gonna have a problem because um, important is just to always hold on the line. Like keep DPSing, keep DPSing. The mo most of the things apply automatically, but people are not safe in their gameplay and that's why they are failed. Most of the time, in my opinion. I don't know. Um, I'm just, um, you know, I'm just guessing. <laughs> um, I, ha I happen to have the same problem, so yeah. Um, the next one is the Transcendence passive, Freed Will, Red Avenger. Mm, this one looks also com confusing, but actually, well, the fact is, it looks like a lot of information. But you'd rather don't want to worry too much about this one. What is important is that both, both buffs, while being in Gale or Annihilation mode, grants 5% attack damage. Attack, 5% attack. And... You will change these buffs so much on and on that you won't even realize it. It's the yellow ones actually. Um, these ones. And you can see you can have both buffs. You can have both. And that's really insane. Um, so also don't worry about too much about this. So if you just DPS, these will appear automatically. There is nothing you need to like look for or just keep DPSing. Um, I won't go too much into this. But you can see we get addit additionally 5% crit, critic lit and 5% devastation. Uh, devastation obviously is maximized. And that's how our stats are hold together again. Um, so if you are worrying again, isn't 70 a bit too less maximized? Don't worry, you get like 25 from your passives and 12% from your gear. So you're totally fine there. Um, let's go to the next. The next is Berserker. Uh, Berserker is uh, a really interesting one. Berserker just says that your buffs get a buff. So this means that the buff for Shade grants you 15% critical damage and the Cutter buff also gets like a boost. But more for that later. Let's go to the next one. Bloodmaster. <laughs> Bloodmaster. Our good old beloved revive passive, nothing much to say here. Um, keep in mind, after being revived, the HP gain is reduced a little, but um, that's not important because the Gale Aura is still insane. It heals you and also you're going to take less damage while your revive passive is on cooldown. Um, the last passive is Thirst. Thirst is also more like a PvP oriented uh, passive it says that here you can see thirst there it was there it was here 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 that's thirst it's just a pvp thing you get more movement speed while bleeding opponents are nearby but yeah okay so we covered every passive now it's time for 
the depth, the important things. I will give you my skill setup now. As you can see, this is the setup I use on Raid. And let's just see. So, okay. <clears throat> what makes a good BQ DPS? Obviously, you always want to keep up these two. Purple Sword and Shade always up. You can see here Shade. That's the Purple Sword. These two buffs are always up. Stoic is always up. And don't worry. If you always use a skill with every blood hit skill, the, Q the cooldown of every other skill is reduced by one second. So this is actually really insane because it allows you to keep up your stoic almost 24-7. Um, basically it's U UDPS. And then you use S, D, Q and C to reduce your cooldown. And while doing this, you always keep your buffs up. Like S and C. And you set up heal fields with R, which is Blood Swamp, and then you just DPS. It's nothing else actually, you just DPS. Your passive gets stacked, you DPS, you reduce your cooldown like this, and there it is. I'm not reducing my cooldown actually right now, I'm just using my skills as you can see. Um, obviously in Raid you have more cooldown boosts, so um, even, even though I have now skills on cooldown while being a DPS in Raid, that's not a thing actually. Mm, and that's really important actually. Um, so, what else is important now to keep track of? Actually, nothing much. Um, if you look at this, we're already at the end because for this character, it's just important that you understand your passives. That's the most important thing. You just need to understand like how you have to buff yourself. Like you always buff yourself first, obviously. And then you start DPSing. What I can also tell you is that you may want to keep track of the purple sword because if you use it again, it instantly gains the purple sword. If the effect runs out, you have to use it twice again. Like, see, that's just you're losing time there. So <clears throat> in Ultimately, we can just say that this skill setup is important because every of those skills, except for Brandish as a blood hit skill, what does that mean? That every blood hit skill reduces the cooldown of each other. So if like everything is on cooldown, which I can't even do because <laughs> the cooldown uh, is going down so fast, um, you can keep always the passive up. It, this is the most important core thing. The other things, they, they just run automatically in the background. And that's why we don't have so much to say about the DPS, because it's just it's just in the movement and staying alive is more important, because even though you can create, create heal fields, remember, you always have this one frame where you are at 10% HP and you, you're gonna die a lot. A lot, lot. Like, um, even I even I am dying, like, uh, in Raid Monster, because you can't just control it if you have a heal field okay nice if you press a potion okay nice but being under this circumstances for even just a single frame is very dangerous so that's why practicing is the most important thing keep practicing keep asking things um as you can see i've take I, I have taken time to create this for you so i've also time for answering questions or helping you a bit so just ask stuff. You can't do anything wrong there. <laughs> and um, I'm not going to ask you now to like or subscribe if you, if you like this video. But for me it's just important. If you have any more questions, put them down or ask in my Discord. And yeah, um, that's actually it. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we have reached the end, guys. Um, I hope I could help you a bit. I hope I can help you more if you ask stuff. My name is Tolu and thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.